This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Mahindra & Mahindra is one of India's oldest companies. It's been around since before independence, since the British were here. In this episode, we look at what Mahindra & Mahindra has done in terms of corporate social responsibility, what it thinks of this area in terms of the environment and in terms of corporate India's responsibility towards the environment. Has its ideas on corporate social responsibility changed over the years? It started by us creating a trust, which basically said that this money will be used for educating people and transforming their lives so that we can empower them to think. And that process is only education. In the 50s, were there other companies doing the same sort oh, of I'm thing? Oh, I'm sure. Everybody does this in their own way. But in a small way. Well, somebody could say what we were doing is also in a small way. And please also remember that the size of the companies in the 50s was minimal compared to today. Do you think when you look back that if uh, corporate India had had more social responsibility that you could have helped uh, the uh, progress? You're that probably we... right, we could have. But I think you must also remember that in the 70s, 80s and partly in the 90s, India's economy grew at 3% a year. Regulations stifled any enterprise. Everything was regulated by government. The city of Bombay uh, they say it was really built by businessmen. There were uh, businessmen who set up those, uh, a lot of Parsi businessmen were involved in setting up those baths where poorer Parsis could stay, etc. And then suddenly something happens after 47 where you don't find that participation anymore. Uh, do you think it was because of socialism? Do you think it was that? I think it was more than socialism. The Vlain, I think, in, in came in play the role of the politician. I think prior to our independence, there were limitations as to the powers of a politician. After independence, he became the supreme king. And therefore, everything was centered around political power. Everything was centered that you could not do anything without political agreement or assent or approval, and they led the whole thing. I mean, take the city of Bombay. Look at the slums there. How did they come about? They came about because the politician saw votes in them. These were original construction workers who should have gone back to wherever they came from. But no, they were allowed to take over land that belonged to some private sector. They were allowed to create slums. And that you saw that you see the deterioration in Bombay City. A new initiative of the Mahindras in CSR terms is the Pride School they established in Pune a year ago.
It's a skills training center that has trained 600 students, all of whom found employment within 24 hours of finishing their courses. I don't believe that everybody should go to college. You know, and this is a misnomer. But people should be taught skills, empower them with skills. I don't know whether you heard of our schools in Pune. Yes, I have. You have. Well, mm. it's a wonderful eye-opener for us as to how, with a little effort, mm. we have in one year changed the lives of 600 people. Not necessarily from government schools. We have our own system of screening uh, uh, children who would probably have finished from school. So these are not children who are in schools. They would have finished, but yes, entirely from government schools because they're from very, very poor families. We bring them for three months and we train them to meet the requirements of predetermined customers. Now, whether the customers are from the BPO industry or the hospitality industry or automobile industry, we already have customers. They've told us we need so many people and this is the kind of skill that we want you to impart. We give them simple things, Tavleen, how to answer the phone, how to start a computer, how to lay a table, how to do bed sheets for hotel employees, things like this. Started with a, with a, with a, with a group of 200 students, all from lower scheduled caste tribes. And uh, much to our surprise, after six months training, the first 200 batch were all employed within 24 hours in Pune. And, you know, and not by us. So are you going to expand that Yes, program? we're going to do one in Jaipur, and we're going to do wherever we think we can. Over the years, the group decided that it wanted to concentrate on education as its main area of social responsibility. And in doing this, have come up with a remarkable scheme to educate the girl child, which they call the Nani Kali scheme. What makes it remarkable is its simplicity. You contribute, anyone can contribute a small amount of money in a year that goes towards paying for things like school books and clothes for a girl child from a very poor family. Two very important influences in me. One that coming from America, I recognize that despite all the criticism we heap on them, it's a very charitable society. Mm. That if you look at the statistics, on the average, every individual, every humble American citizen contributes from 5 to 10 percent of their income every year to charity. We don't have a culture of giving, we didn't see one. Mm. And here you go to your temple, you throw a morsel to the dog, you throw a morsel to the beggar, it's religious charity. We don't have a culture of giving. So that's something I felt was important to bring. And then I saw all these people becoming suddenly wealthy. Mm. There was a conscience. They wanted to give some of their wealth. But they didn't know where to give it. Was there a credible institution? And these young people wanted to see a connection between their money and the result. Mm. They didn't simply want to write a charity, a, a, a check to the X charity or Y charity. I had seen when I was in America a, a UN program, which was about an adopted child. Adopt as in... Mm. Uh, targeted giving to a person. And I thought that was very powerful, that if you can present to a donor the image of the person that they are going to support and provide them the results, not allowing, of course, connect, contact, because that goes against NGO norms, but if you can provide that connection, then you will have solved the problem of where is my money going. We had a trust. I believe our brand name represents trust and credibility, so that was the second part of the puzzle. And the third was a very easy form of giving, 1,200 rupees a year. You know, what do you have to do to give that or to feel good about giving that? That's what we started with giving. And so we said, look, this is all you have to give and you'll get a report every six months. The key was I had a choice of do I give money on my own or can I create a platform where many more give? So it was a multiplier effect. So it started really with that very humble beginning. And I requested my father who was alive then and my uncle Keshav that can I do it under the auspices of the KC Mahindra Trust? So I gave a small corpus to the trust and then the program grew and it's 
grown beyond uh, my very modest expectations. It's what, 30,000? Uh, oh, 60 to 80,000. I mean, that's, girls their target are. is 100,000. So they, they promise me they're going to get there. And they, this money that we contribute goes towards their... their to various their... NGOs who then administer it. Hmm. And it goes to supporting their education. Now you might say, what education? Education is free, and it is, particularly for the girl child. But what people don't realize is, that it's not simply the tuition that they need, who's going to buy their books, who's going to buy their supplies. And very often it's those small expenditures that they have to make which force a parent in a very impoverished circumstance not to send the child to school even though it's free. But when they get an inflow of funds which is supporting their incidental expenses and even if that money goes into freeing up the parent from giving something, that's good because then they actually permit the child to go to school. On account of decades of neglect, primary education in India, when it isn't in private schools, is as primitive as can be. The average government school, especially outside the big cities, is so basic that such minimum requirements as classrooms, desks and school books are often missing. Then there's the problem of absent teachers that has reached such serious proportions that many state governments have started schemes that encourage big corporations to adopt government schools to improve their functioning. We are, we are doomed unless we reform our primary uh, school system. That's the real gap. I would argue, frankly, that even our secondary system, even our engineering institutions, apart barring the IITs, are really of an appalling quality and not consistent. So we have work to do across the board. Are you involved at all, say, for instance, in Rajasthan, where I know that the chief minister has a program where you can actually adopt a school, and then if, you know she continues to own it, or the state owns it, and and the company can can then improve it? Are you involved at all? In no, um, as you know, we have a major involvement in Rajasthan with our special economic zone. Yes, that's zone. why I asked. And uh, the chief minister made very clear, and we were very willing to to listen. Uh, to her request that we get involved in a number of other areas which were more to do with CSR. And I think Mr. Keshav Mahendra was there at the launch. He made commitments, firstly about the midday meal scheme. So we are very major supporters of the midday meal scheme, which to be honest is an enabler of education, first of all. A lot of the kids are sent to school because of the midday meal. We have put up, we have committed to put up a Mahendra Pride School, which is a vocational school for backward uh, sections of society. It's a skills training school. It's a skills training school, because employability as we call it. What I must say though is we are working very closely with the Nandi Foundation, which Dr. Reddy had set up from Andhra. He got me on as a trustee uh, of the foundation. And in fact, we consult very closely with Nandi and all our initiatives. They are almost like the black box for our uh, charitable initiatives. So not just in uh, Jaipur, but in Andhra and other places, we work very closely with the uh, Nandi Foundation. In fact, the Nandi Kali project now is, is done in alliance with the Nandi Foundation. It is a good idea, you think? I think it's an excellent idea. It's fraught with many pitfalls. You will find as many uh, different views on how to implement it as you will find people. I'm sure there are a lot of corporates who are picking their battles, picking their arenas in which to help.